whatever they make they are supposed to contribute to the society and that is what the csr talks about so when they are making profit they'll actually go with undue advantage of the society they are supposed to actually take those profit from whom from the consumer itself so what they do is but what the business people need to do the business enterprise need to do is they need to minimize these social problems Hello everybody a warm welcome to one and all I'm Abhilash Chandra from the department of business studies in Vidyashram Pu college the temple of excellence welcome to the next session of social responsibility and business ethics in this session we're going to talk more about the social responsibility and the arguments now we need to know that what the public feels about social responsibility what exactly the public feel about the business enterprises and the entrepreneurs so we have the beautiful topic that is arguments against social responsibility so these are the points which we are supposed to cover but you are supposed to know that you are a responsible citizen so what are your arguments against social responsibility will the business do the social responsibility or not so to know more about it we need to actually learn about a topic called as csr so what exactly csr is all about corporate social responsibility now the government of india has actually given a order the government of india has given an order that we are supposed to go with the csr and that too they have given few of the clauses which says that the business enterprises if they are making some kind of criteria now they are supposed to give it to the society and it is an obligation now you'll feel that will the company give their part of profit to the society and your answer is yes they should because 2% of the profit whatever they make they are supposed to contribute to the society and that is what the csr talks about so we have the arguments against social responsibility the first argument is a violation of profit maximization please understand this word maximization there is something called the objective that is violation of profit maximization objective secondly we have burden on consumers now you need to understand whenever you go with the burdens of consumer now what the consumer does is all the things whatever the company is incurring loss what they usually do is they give everything to the consumer so they'll take everything from the consumer the next one is lack of social skills please understand this what the people that is the ordinary men like me and you always feel is the business doesn't have the common sense about the social skills and the last one is lack of broad public support now here public will also not support the business the reason being public feel that the business is only to maximize profit business enterprises they come and they use all the resources so what happens is there is a dispute between the company and the business entrepreneur so that is what are the arguments of social responsibility which is totally against it so we'll go one by one what exactly these term is all about the first one is violation the word violation itself says that there is a problem and there is a dispute so here according to this argument business exist only for profit maximization please understand there are two things one is profit maximization and one more is wealth wealth maximization when you talk more about profit maximization here what happens is the business entrepreneurs and the business enterprises whichever start the business what they do is they aim for maximizing profit so when they aim for maximizing profit they will forget about the ethical behavior which they are supposed to maintain and they are supposed to go for so what usually happens understand this funda very much right the profit maximization sometimes what happens is the company will forget that 
what they are supposed to do and what they are not supposed to do. They always go for unethical practice is what the public feels. Therefore, any talk of social responsibility is against this objective. So whenever the company also speaks anything about social responsibility, the public will not feel that they are doing it from the heart. They are doing it some in some other kind of a perspective is what the public will also feel. So this is what the first argument that is there is a violation of profit maximization objective because the society feels that the company is that only to make profit. So when they are making profit, they'll actually go with undue advantage of the society and they'll exploit more resources. And what happens is they'll not give back to the society at all. And that's the reality which many of the business entrepreneurs and the enterprise have already done. They have exploited the resources, but when it comes to what they are supposed to do to the society, whatever they feel like, they won't do it. The reason being what? They all think about money and profit maximization. Secondly, we have is burden on consumers. So this thing you are supposed to know that the consumer is the king in the market. But here what happened? The king is getting more burden. The reason being everything is put across to the consumer all alone. So here it is an argument that social responsibility like pollution control and environmental protections are very costly and often required huge financial investment. When they require huge financial investment, what is that they do? Whatever the thing they feel, that is they'll go with their own pricing. When they go with their own pricing, it's a burden to whom? Not to the manufacturer, not to the people who gives credit, the people who buy the product. So now what happens is, See, the company should also grow. The company should also maintain the societal relationship. So what usually happens is the company, if they need to do the 2% of profit sharing with the society, they are supposed to actually take those profit from whom? From the consumer itself. So what they do is they actually give burden to the consumer. So I'll give you a simple equation here. Total cost plus profit is equal to selling price. So this is what the formula is all about. Now total cost means what the cost incurred to manufacture a product. Say we have fixed cost and we have variable cost. So here what happens is, I'll give you an example here. Fixed cost, variable cost, then you make profit and then you go for selling price. All the things are the same, but here what happens is there is a problem with profit. When there is a problem with profit, selling price will have the advantage as well as the disadvantage that is it can increase or it can decrease if it decreases it's a disadvantage to the company if it increases it's the disadvantage for the consumer so here you need to know when the profit has been shared to the societal aspect so it is disadvantage to whom to the company so what they do is they maximize the profit Total cost, they'll remain it has same, but will they maximize more profit? When they maximize more profit, now who is the person who is getting more burden? It is the consumer who is actually going and buying the product. That's why I tell you students here, it's a burden on consumers. So it is not like the company and the industry are doing the social responsibility by themselves. They are doing it from the consumer's money. So here what happens? It's a real burden to the consumer. Nextly, we have a lack of social skills. Please understand, all these social problems cannot be solved. Yes, we should accept it. We are in the gods, so we cannot solve all the social problems. Now, social problems can be anything related to the societal aspect. But what the business people need to do, the business enterprise need to do is they need to minimize these social problems. But are they doing it? You need to ask a question to yourself. Are you doing it? Right. So the next one here is the way business problems are solved. The business problems are solved the way it is. But the real problem that is a societal problem, nobody is able to crack it. Nobody is able to solve it. In fact, businessmen 
do not have the necessary understanding and training of social problems. Yes, it's very, very true. Now, the businessman only knows how to make profit. The businessman knows how to take opportunity. A businessman knows how to take a risk and maintain that certainty in the uncertainty. But when it comes to the societal aspect, a businessman doesn't know anything. That's why students, I'll tell you, in Japan, there are the faculties who are giving training to the students how to actually fight the calamities, how to be very sensible in the society. So these are the disciplines which they are actually teaching their kids. But here in India, if you try to understand that, what we usually do is, we don't train our students to be in what exactly they should be. We train the students only for the academic one. But here you need to thank Vidyashram. Vidyashram is the only college which does everything to the students that is from A to Z. So here you need to understand there is a lack of social skill in the sense when I say that the business, business man or the men's, what they usually do is they don't have any kind of responsibility because they don't know how to solve the societal problems. They don't have any responsibility to solve. The reason is they have never understood what the social responsibility is and the societal, what they really wanted from them. But there are huge companies, MNC companies who always think about the environment. They always go with societal causes and they give more of charity donation and the CSR, corporate social responsibility. And they're the people who actually are the backbone for all the cleanliness or all other things which we really require in a society. So again, you have a boon as well as you have a bane in many of the companies. Next one is lack of broad public support. Now here what happens is the argument is that the public is generally does not like business involvement or interference in social programs. Now please understand here. You would have heard about NGOs. Now what this NGOs does, right? Non-government organizations. Now they have pitched in to actually support the societal aspect. The reason being, they felt that the government aren't so much taking care of the society. That's why they have actually come. That is non-government organization. Here what happens is, the government cannot solve all the problems of the society. The reason being is, the government feels that it is the responsibility of individual who also need to contribute for the societal aspect. Now the individual what he feels is, he feels that why should I do it? When government isn't doing it, when other people aren't doing it, who really have money, they aren't doing it. Why should I invest my savings to the societal aspect? Now here what happens is, everybody are giving a reason and excuse of somebody else. The same way here also, that is the social programs, whichever happens across the country, they don't want the businessmen to pitch in because they feel that the minute the businessman is pitching in, he will pitch in because of a profit or the sense of ownership. So here what happens, there is again a lack of broad public support. The public will also not support anybody who wants to take the initiative and do something really good. I'll give you an example here. We had a situation where the business enterprises, they all teamed up and they wanted to actually do some favor for the societal aspect. When they wanted to do something, what usually happened was the opposition party and the localites, right? They had a opposition uh, subject saying that they don't want the business corporate to enter to the social programs. Now we have seen thousands of these kind of live examples where they feel that the business enterprises should not come and they shouldn't support or interfere any social programs. Therefore, business cannot operate successfully because of lack of public confidence and cooperation in solving social problems. Now, we all know that what exactly the social problem is all about. We know that how to tackle it, handle it. But here we need the support, the support from both the ends, that is the societal 
uh, and the business enterprises. When society wants the business people to come and invest, the business people will not invest. And when the business people want the society to actually support, the society will also not support the business people. So here there is a slight clash. The reason being is miscommunication or mis interpretation of all the things but whatever happens the problems remains a problem that is what the thing is you are supposed to know now we have the next topic that is kinds of social responsibility so understand what are the kinds of social responsibility there are four kinds of social responsibility in your syllabus the four kinds are the first one is economic responsibility secondly we have is legal thirdly is ethical and fourth is discretionary responsibility so please understand the word responsibility here when we go with the responsibility if we start dividing it into four of the major responsibility the first one is economical so economic right now the second one we go with legal thirdly we have ethical right we have ethical and lastly we have discrete right done please understand when we talk about economic now what exactly this economic activity is all about economic activity in the sense where you make money wherever the money is involved we call it as economic activity but we don't have economic activity here we have economic responsibility so here what happens is the business will need to produce and they need to sell the product. So that is what their economic responsibility is. People should get the product what they really want. So they need to maintain the standard and they are supposed to produce and they are supposed to manufacture and then they are supposed to sell it. So we call it as the economic responsibility. Second one is the business need to maintain legality. So when they maintain legality, we call it as legal responsibility. Please go back to the first chapter where I have told you about what exactly business is all about. Business is a process of buying and selling of goods and services for a main motive to earn profit. And the business, whichever we do, it should be legal in the eyes of law. When I say that, that is the responsibility of the business entrepreneurs that they are supposed to maintain legal things and then they are supposed to go forward. So they should be abide by the law of the country and the law of the countries, whichever they are actually going for the trade or business. So legal responsibility here, what happens is you need to know law of land. What is it? Law of land. When you go and search about the law of land it can be a difference it can be a similarity there are few country where law of land is somewhere it is similar right it is not exact but it is similar but if you go across many of the countries the western country the european countries you feel that the law of land is totally different from our country reason being is it's all upon the government and the society how they look around so you are supposed to maintain the legal responsibility when you are working in the society the third one is ethical responsibility and when i say ethics ethics is totally subjective whatever i feel that it is good it can be bad to you it's a vice versa now here ethical responsibility is now you are not supposed to break the ethical moral values which you would have already got it or you should actually go for that is the obligation and here no law has been written for the ethical responsibility but still you are supposed to be ethical now what usually happens here is you need to see that the society is also growing if you are growing so these are the things called as ethical responsibility and you shouldn't do things because the government tells you to do it you should take initiative and then you are supposed to help the society at large so that is called the ethical responsibility and the last one is discretionary responsibility discretionary responsibility is totally different kind of a responsibility where the business need to give charity 
to the people who are in need. Now here we have economic responsibility, legal responsibility, ethical responsibility, but the discretionary responsibility in the sense, if the government is facing a problem because of a natural calamity or say any kind of a thing. Now what the company need to do is, the company would have taken more profit from the society. Now the company need to prove to it that they really care about the society at large. Now this pandemic 2020, what really happened, you people need to know that Tata groups, Ratan Tata especially, he gave 1000 crores to the public through the PM fund, right? The Prime Minister fund. Now what exactly it is? That is what the discretionary responsibility. Now nowhere, no law has actually written that you are supposed to do it, but who is doing it? He is doing it from his heart. So we call it as discretionary responsibility. We should always be very kind, generous to the society and we should always think that it's not just me who should grow, it should be we who should grow. So these are the things which you are supposed to know. Today we have learned about the social responsibility that is the arguments which is against social responsibility and then we learned also about the kinds of social responsibility. If you have any doubt, you know what exactly you are supposed to do. We are the only college which does everything to the students. Thank you so much. I'll see you when I see you.